forgot to do that last week. <laughs> Incompetent leaders create a toxic corporate culture that brings everybody down. And what he found was that one trait uh, that they could identify in most all of the incompetent leaders was arrogance. And so he came up with a 10 question uh, uh, test to determine if uh, people were incompetent leaders. And uh, several of the questions on that test were, um, do you have a special gift of playing office politics? Another was, uh, blessed, uh, are you blessed by natural charisma? And the last one, uh, are you talented in that you can fake humility? Our Bible passage today, I thought of this when uh, I was reading the Bible passage. It's a story about how Jesus uh, faced the Pharisees who were trying to make him look as incompetent as possible. We remember, uh, as Tom read, that uh, they came and asked him, uh, do you have to pay taxes? And uh, it was just a, a question that either way he answered it, he would be in trouble. If he said, yeah, it's all right to pay taxes, uh, then the people that followed him would be upset. If he said, no, you don't have to pay taxes, the Roman government would really be upset. And uh, if he said that, uh, you, you have to pay, don't have to pay taxes, or you have to pay taxes. Uh, you know, these people were being oppressed by the Roman government on top of that. So they would really be upset. You know, we don't like paying taxes. How many here like paying taxes? <laughs> it's just hard to write out that check, you know. Uh, most of the time I end up having to pay more even though I... Uh, send in every three months, but whew, I hate to do that. Uh, it's good news when my tax accountant says, you've got money coming. <laughs> That's what we always want to hear. We don't like to pay taxes, but we have to pay taxes. Otherwise, you don't have a road out here. Otherwise, you don't have uh, buses, schools, highways. Think of how much good that happens from those taxes. Yeah, some of it is, you know, squandered, but people just don't like to pay them. Lots of people will get sued by the IRS and they'll turn around and sue the IRS back. And one of those I read about was uh, they sued on the grounds that it was a form of slavery because it violates the 13th Amendment. And I thought, well, that, you know, one person, no, there's people doing that all the time. I think so far the IRS is one of them. <laughs> Jay Leno said, if you don't want to get audited, uh, avoid red flags. And then he went on to say, if your bank account has money in it after you pay the taxes, that's a red flag. <laughs> The Pharisees didn't really care about Jesus' opinion about taxes. Jesus didn't care about the popularity. He didn't even care about his safety. And he said, render to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. Boy, that made him unpopular with about everybody. You know, first of all, the followers got to pay taxes. Jesus said so. But then he also said, you got to give to God too. Double downer. Really unpopular. Pastor Brian Cluth had a four-year-old daughter, Amanda, and one day in church came time for the offering and uh, they had given her her quarter like they do every Sunday. And she didn't want to put it in the plate. She just had that thing in her fist and she wouldn't let go. Mama had to pry her fingers open to get that quarter out and put it in the plate. Kind of embarrassing for a pastor, isn't it? And his wife. That afternoon they heard noise in the backyard and uh, 
Amanda was out there swinging. And it sounded like she was mumbling, but as they listened closer, they could find that every time the swing went up as high as it would, she'd say, God, give me my quarterback. <laughs> God, give me my quarterback. <laughs> Jesus isn't trying to pile extra stress on us. It's our responsibility to pay our taxes. It's our responsibility to give to God's work. This text is a, a teaching about important spiritual principles. Giving is the ultimate sign that we trust God. You've probably heard it said, if you want to know what you believe or where your heart is, look at your checkbook. Look at where the money went. You know? How did it happen? Where did most of it go? How much went to God's work? Christian couple, Jerry and Muriel Caven, were nearing retirement and they realized that uh, God was the owner of everything they had. They hadn't seen that until they got ready to retire. And they had this retirement plan and they had lots of money coming and they didn't know what to do. But because they realized that God was the owner of this money, they found ways to be in ministry, to reach out to people, to use that money for good. Jerry says, once we understood we were giving away not our money, but God's money to God's work, we had a peace and joy we never had back when we thought it was our money. Wow. Interesting how trusting in God leads to greater peace and greater joy. Trusting in money and material things uh, is a path to misery. It causes anxiety and fear and greed and conflict. You know, God wants us to be empty of frustration. That we could uh, stop trusting material things. You know, I have a problem with that yesterday. Uh, I have a home warranty policy on my house that I bought when I retired because I didn't want any unexpected things and it's worked good. I had a microwave go out, $75, they put a new one in. Uh, air conditioner unit went out outside, it was 600 bucks, they paid it. I have a hot water heater that's going out. They came, sent a uh, company out. I paid them $75. They left a paper there of the things that wouldn't be covered by my home warranty. $890. You know, I, I have the money, but I just don't want to part with it. And, you know, sometimes on these home warranties, you can talk to them and say, well, I want to do it myself, and, and they'll give you a buyout on it, and they'll send you a check. And I thought, well, that's good. I'll, Check with somebody locally. Uh, I've got another company to come in and give me an estimate. 2600 bucks. <laughs> Last time I put a new hot water heater in anywhere was 200 bucks. <laughs> I don't want to part with my money. Trusting in material things. But you know, when you trust in material things and you want to build up uh, your assets, with greed, there's never enough. No matter how much is in your bank account, you always want more when you have that attitude. But giving brings meaning and purpose to life. The second teaching, giving is the ultimate opportunity we have to impact the world. You know, sometimes we'll look at our bank account and it's a little bit low, or as a business, we look at our balance sheet and we see some minus numbers in there. And that leads to anxiety and, and greed kicks in. If we see giving as an opportunity instead, we see how we can impact lives in the world. Pastor W.A. Criswell told a story about a man that was asked, what did you do yesterday? The man said, yesterday 
I taught a class in college, church college. Uh, on Tuesday, he was down in the Rio Grande Valley and working in a vacation Bible school. On Wednesday, he was operating in a church hospital in Nigeria. And on Thursday, he was teaching the Word of God to the Amazon jungle. And on Friday, he was building a church house in the Philippines. And on Saturday, he was preaching in Tokyo, Japan. The friend stopped him and said, man, even in the jet age, you can't do all of that. The fellow said, but I do it every day. I give a tithe to my church and it goes all over the earth doing good for Jesus Christ. Well, think about that. I don't think you know it, most, most of you. Yesterday, we had a, a, a lady that worked in a nursing home. Uh, she had an automobile accident. Uh, she, uh, I think, has lost three weeks of work. She doesn't have any health insurance. You helped her. We sent a check. Right, Sharon? We sure did. Right, Melanie? You, but all that comes from the offering that we have here. Not only that, if you uh, look at all that we do here, you know, with Community Service League, how many people, well, they come to us because they know that we're there. They call us the little church that roars. <coughs> And that's because of your offerings. And, 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 you know, lots of churches are really struggling right now because uh, people haven't been in church and consequently there's no offering. Or not enough. You've kept up. I thank God for what you do here. We also, through our apportionments, you know, I don't... Apportionments has been a bad word ever since I've been in the ministry. But if you break it down, it's a portion meant for others. A portion meant for others. A lot of people look at it as a tax. I see it as a tithe from this church to the church in Missouri and the churches in the world. You may be unsure about the ministry that God's calling you to. You don't have time for that physical ministry. Or uh, you're super busy and you, you just don't have time for it. Or you don't have much money. Every little bit helps. When we put that all together in this church, just like we put it together with all the other churches in Missouri and all the churches in the United States and all the churches in the world. Look what we can do because we're a connectional ministry. In 2011, the University of Georgia football coach Mark Richt and his wife Catherine sold their eight bedroom mansion for $2 million. They took that money and used it in ministry. They looked for ways to help people, to reach out. They'd been reading this book, The Hole in Our Gospel by Richard Stearns, who was president of World Vision. They were inspired by that, and consequently they found a way to be involved in ministry with the money. Mark said, I don't want to pour money into a home like that when I can use it for better things, for eternal things. Wonderful attitude. You know, most of us don't have a $2 million home we can sell. Anybody here got one? You know? But we can still find joy in giving. And that brings us to the last thing I want to say. Giving is the ultimate pathway to joy. You ever notice that every hard teaching of God results in a blessing for those who believe and obey? I can get to it. Matthew 16, verse 25, tells us, Jesus said, If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it, but if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. If you try to hang on to your life, you're going to lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, 
you could put money in there, couldn't you? If you try to hang on to your money, huh, you'll lose it. If you give up your life, give up your money, in my, for my sake, you'll save it. Amazing. Teaching us to live in faith rather than fear is what Jesus is about. Fear is that little voice in our head that says, you know, I haven't been giving much to the church. Um, and, and, and I'll give as soon as, as soon as I get that promotion. I, I'll, I'll maybe have $500 more I can put in the plate. Or, you know, I've got a car payment, and I'm going to make the last payment this year. I can start giving more of that. Peace and fulfillment are only found in following Christ and God's priorities. Johnny Jennings, when he was 18 years old, went to a children's home. And while he was there, three little boys came up and they grabbed him by the hand, they grabbed him by the shirt tail, and every one of them begged Johnny to adopt them. 18 years old. There's no way in the world he could do that. But even at 18 years old, he was so moved that he went home and he started working with recycling, picking up paper and aluminum cans, anything he could find that he could sell and make money, put it in a savings account, and they'd send that money to the children's homes. He worked hard for it. His son Brent said he and the whole family would go out and they would walk together just for a walk. But all the while they were looking for anything they could recycle and bring it into the house and, and sell it for money. Not too long ago, Johnny was 86 years old and he was honored for giving $400,000 total to the Georgia Baptist Children's Home. When they asked him why, he said, the meaning of life is to find your gift. The purpose, purpose of life is to give it away. But that the meaning of life is to find your gift. And the purpose of life is to give it away. You know, giving is a joy. Um, I've been in ministry for 26 years now, and I think we've been connected to Mozambique almost all that time. All the churches in Missouri support churches in Mozambique. We support uh, pastors um, that are in the seminary in Mozambique. Uh, we support them with wells for goats, uh, about everything. We found a, a way to touch their lives. At uh, annual conference, a couple of times we've had delegations from Mozambique there as part of the Missouri annual conference. And one of them was a choir, I remember. Another one was a group, and they could sing. But they showed us what it is to give. They had a video of one of their churches. You know, in a church there, some of them, there's not a building, it's just outside. Some of them, it's a mud hut. Uh, you never, you know, they're all different, but none of them are a nice building like we have here. But when it came time for the offering, they didn't have ushers passing the plate. They had us sitting at the altar. And people came, and everybody was singing and dancing all the way down the aisles. And then putting their money in. They didn't wait for somebody to come and collect it. They were dancing with joy at being able to give to the ministry of that church in Mozambique. The meaning of life is to find your gift. And the purpose of life is to give it away. I praise God for what we do as a church. I praise God for each and every one of you. And I praise God for the ministries 
of the United Methodist Church. Amen. 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 Let's all stand and join in our closing hymn. Go forth for God, 670. 670.